you had brought this up, it is something we should talk about. And I agree. I mean, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are just going straight to Angio, doing the the embolization, and that's it. Uh, you and I both agree on on cone beam CT. Yeah. So I think in the in the beginning, cone beam was uh, deemed as something to make sure that we are indeed in the prostate. Um, you know, you're not embolizing the bladder, you're not embolizing, yeah. you know, some some other structures, and that that it was like a confirmatory tool. Um, you know. What we found from the initial experience and a lot of the reported literature is cone beam is really valuable, not just for that, but also identification of other supply and collaterals. And Absolutely. so early papers have reported like collaterals in the realm of like 20 to 40% of patients. I think in my own practice, I see them in like 60 to 70% of patients. Wow. And so why is that important? When I take somebody to Angio, what I tell them is, like, I want to get you to uh, a five-year success rate that matches, you know, Tiago's work and matches Carnivale's work, which is yep. like basically in the recurrence rate is under 20%. And in order to do that, uh, you want to treat everything that's going to the prostate at the same time. Identify the, the major blood supply, but any collaterals that might crop up and then feed the gland after you've done the embolization. And to do that, I really rely heavily on cone beam to make sure that there aren't extra prosthetic sources that I need to coil off and such. And so, yeah, I see those in like 60 to 70% of cases and I'm doing a lot of coil embolization before we do the particle embolization to, to facilitate that. And you're able to see them a lot of time when you're cone beam CT. I don't think that gets talked about enough is using cone beam as a tool to identify collaterals that either need to be embolized or, you know, just something you got to look out for during the treatment. Yeah. So what, what I use cone, like the way I've been using cone beam and, and, uh, I think a lot of people started doing it this way is rather than using it once you get into the prostate, uh -huh. I do like a, basically a pelvic cone beam CT to get a lay of the land, yeah. the anatomy, and then look at everything that is going towards the gland. And my, my quote unquote search pattern, uh, for this is I look at what's perfusing the, the penis on both sides first. Uh huh. And then making sure that there is a, you know, a distal pudendal branch that's coming back up towards the prostate or feeding the prostate. Once I've cleared that, um, if there is, then I try to get into that and coil it off to begin with. Okay. Once I've cleared that, then I look at what's going to the gland on both sides. Is there stuff from the rectum, stuff from the bladder, you know, et cetera, where's the origin? And then trying to treat all of those vessels at the same time. And what we found is once you get over like 80 to 100 grams, you're usually going to have like two arteries on the right, you know, uh -huh. two on the left, some kind of asymmetry that you just got to get into all these different vessels. Are they usually big enough on there when they're that big? Are they usually big enough to identify the ones that you're going to have to treat or, you know, are they hard to distinguish from, you know, some of these collaterals, you know, as you said, like from a pudendal that, you know, you would coil rather than, you know, use particles through? Yeah. So basically what my, my goal is, is to get into all the little ones, if they are several, coil all those off, basically skeletonize the gland, so to speak, yeah. and then get into the main supply and then embolize that with particles to stasis. So going after those at the beginning rather than during your treatment, uh, does the, you know, the, the, do these prostates, pelvic and prostatic arteries, do they respond the same way they do in the liver where you could do an embolization and then like 30 minutes later, you know, you get redistribution of flow, um, you know, into the rest of the gland. Yeah. So that's, that's basically, you know, what, uh, you know, what we've seen in, in our own experience. And then in others have reported this, that like, where do re early recurrences come from? And it's, it's usually these collaterals that you either didn't treat the first time or didn't see, or you missed or whatever. And so now I'm just really vigilant about getting into them, coiling yeah. them off up front, such that once you treat the main one, you're getting feeling like, cause that, that inflow is cut off, so to speak, you're getting filling of the whole gland. You're not having any, you know, missing pieces, et cetera. So it's like, um, as I'm doing the case, it's like a jigsaw puzzle yep. and I'm trying to like piece it together side to side and make sure everything is covered and I'm not missing anything. Yeah. I'm with you. Do you ever, you know, see these collaterals that are, that are big enough that you decide you need to, you know, particle embolize as well? Yes. And so I think, I think the, the key is you see how much tissue it's perfusing. Yeah. What's its size relative to your microcatheter? And then when you inject, are you getting anagrade flow or is it mostly refluxing okay. in the territory that you don't want to treat from? 
And so uh, that one way, you know, you can just do that with a catheter. The, the other things that I found is using like vasodilators, nitroglycerin, verapamil, uh-huh. things like that um, can help you and like redirect the flow um, such that you can embolize with particles from these collaterals if it's appropriate and then coil them off when you're, when you're done. Okay. I'm with you. Um, now one more question about cone beam, um, you know, not using it so much anymore to confirm, do you ever do them, you know, after you get the, the microcatheter in and do another one to show how much gland you're perfusing? Typically, typically not. Like I think the pelvic cone beam gives you a really good lay of the land. And just yeah. from a time standpoint, if you want to just move, um, and be efficient, you, you can, you know, estimate from Angio how much gland you're covering yeah, I agree. once you've kind of picked everything off that you need to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get. I think early in your experience, in your first twenty cases or so, you really need it. But after that, it gets it gets really you know second nature. Yeah, I'm I'm not at a point where I'm interested in getting rid of cone beam in in really any sense. Uh, You know, certainly not at the beginning. I'm I'm doing them uh, kind of the way you are. I I asked our friend Dave Johnson his protocol and kind of stolen that. Um, But yeah, for me, it's it's invaluable. 